Morning. Then you take that overlay and you start figuring about what the euro's all about and how all these other countries are falling down on their banking. It's because their grammar is bastardized on all the, on all the contracts. Mm -hmm. And I started looking at all the different, you know, when you go through an airport, you've got 30 different major languages. And they're all written in sequence so I can compare one to the other. And also I'm looking at the patterns. Patterns of using compound words written as one word. But they always put an adverb in front of it to go ahead and disqualify it into a verb, into a verb world, making sure that nobody can read and write and never, no one ever creates a fact. And, and when I had that revelation, I'm looking at, as Pandora, breaking the math interface, putting in the punctuation, using the correct parse syntax grammar for the, for, the, for the words and the sentences, and being able to write every sentence frontwards and backwards mathematically, I'm going like, wow, are we way ahead of the curve here? What we've done is disqualified planet Earth for 8,500 years. So we became the Pandoras by opening the box up, and the box was mathematics. Mm -hmm. No one ever went to war over a math problem in the history of mankind. Now taking and having the knowledge to specifically target mathematics and move it into any language. You can, you can, you can rewrite any language in the quantums. <clears throat> and that means that's a rewrite of every constitution, every trade agreement, every uh, corporation contract, worldwide. You know, a contract writing pays about a thousand bucks an hour. Just below brain surgery. So when you, get, when you learn this and you become proficient at it, you can make a wonderful living at it walking into the companies and saying, you know what, this is how much fraud you got. And I said, you know, I got a broken back. What's, what's the insurance going to pay? He says, well, we'll give you 500 bucks. Excuse me? <laughs> 70 days of pain and $500? I don't think so. And my friend who got hurt too with a brain concussion, uh, she's still suffering nine months later and they offered her $500. I'm going like, I don't think so. This is a permanent disability now. And so, I went ahead and I pulled the insurance policies on Geico, State Farm, Farmers, Allstate. I've been going through all the insurance companies. Now, just like I did with the mortgages that you're all familiar with, when I syntax that with Washington Mutual on, on January 6, 2008, that's cost the United States government $40 trillion at one lawsuit. Just because somebody goes, ah, this is not, don't mean anything. Yeah, well, $40 trillion hit is pretty big on the economy, you know? Right now there's 30 million people in foreclosure. That's 40% of the United States population. 22% unemployment in the United States, and it's going to accelerate. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are filing bankruptcy for $40 trillion because of that lawsuit in, in 2008. So when people laugh and say, this doesn't mean anything, who's going to write a check for that? And now, now I got the insurance company laughing at it. I'm going like, you know, you know what I did with insurance? I mean, what I did with mortgages? All the insurance companies are in the same boat. I tried to buy stock in the stock market the other day. You know what the stock market told me? You're not allowed to buy stock. You're not allowed to trade. You're not allowed to have a security. I'm going like, I'm like why? Because you disqualify all the securities of all the stock markets in the world. Because all securities are in a box written in a italics double spaced and an adverb verb. I mean, how much, how much of a perfect zero can you create? Now, if we allow you to come into our stock markets, you would disqualify all the stock markets in the world. If we allow you to come into my, our schools, you would disqualify all our universities, colleges, and high schools. But when I got done with the Chinese government writing a $20 trillion trade agreement, all colleges, universities, and high schools in China are now teaching my program. South Korea has been doing it for eight years. So this technology is expanding. I've got 1.4 billion people over in China. And they're all studying the English because they have 10,000 letters in their alphabet but only 26 in English. So being able to do that is a very simple thing to learn, especially with, with mathematics. 26 is a lot easier than 10,000. And now that it's mathematically certified frontwards and backwards, you can't cheat them. So that puts us in a very, very powerful position as a director, planet-wide. And now that we've, I've seen the other languages that I'm going after, with both the insurance and the mortgages, you know, my mortgage issues are affecting Europe, all over Europe, and Russia, and China, 
because of the old adverb verb uh, grammar. And even though these are communist, some of the communist countries, they still have to deal with, you can't say 3 plus 3 equals 7. Nobody's going to follow that. They're going to go ahead and they're going to really come after you for that, for that grammar fraud. So the, the technology that we were getting, now we're expanding into the insurance field. No car insurance, no life insurance, no medical insurance, no product liability insurance. What happens if we lose the insurance industry? Well, I went to uh, State of Wisconsin Department of uh, Insurance, and I brought in the three directors of State of Wisconsin's insurance directors. And I walked in, I said, I want to talk to you guys. And he says, you have an appointment. I says, I'm a federal judge. I don't make appointments. You guys, in a room right now, quiet. And after I went on a 45-minute presentation, they were all sitting there crying. They all thought they were going to prison. And he realized that I just had collapsed the entire industry of insurance. Now, 3 plus 3 equals the word, it equals 6. That's correct, right? Yeah. And if I put I in in front of the word correct, it means not correct, right? Mm -hmm. So if I have a surety, which I bought on the stock market, sure means, sure means surety, and I and assurance, A and C, E means contract. E and T is contract, I O N is contract. All these sub uh, words that end in words, these are called contract words. You'll learn just when you study parse grammar. So I said to him, I broke it down. There's three syllables, in, sure, ants. And I says, sure means to have a security, right? And she goes, yeah, all three agree with me. I says, and A and C is a contract. I all said, yeah, we understand syntax. And if I put I in in front of that, then I have no such a security contract, right? They're going like, oh my God, it's with the department of no security contract. <laughs> and right then and there, they had a revelation about what's, what Parse was, of what insurance meant. Then I pulled out the, the farmers and state farm insurance policies, which I had Syntex 60 pages of, and I laid them out on the table, and I said, and these people don't want to pay. Well, they did a little investigation. They pay on 9%. That's it. They pay 9% of the claims, and they harvest 91% of the claims. And those that they pay, they only pay 10 cents on a dollar. So they're only paying 1% out of the 99% premiums they harvest. That's why they're putting up these 50-story apartment buildings. Or, you know, office buildings for the insurance company. So the, the, uh, when they're looking at the numbers, I'm going, when I talk to an adjuster now, I don't listen to what that adjuster says. I go right to the CEO and I says, you want to take care of the medical expenses or do you want me to close your company? The fine under Title 15, Section 1692E is false and misleading statements. Bernie Madoff, $69 billion off of Wall Street. Everybody knows the story. Under Title 15, Section 78FF, it's a $25 million fine for false and misleading statements. Once the document is syntax and proved that it's an engineering nightmare. And it is. So, how many clients does farmers have, or State Farm, or Prudential, or Geico? Five, ten million customers, every one of them is a $25 million fine against the insurance company. Now, if the United States government wants to go ahead and they want to pay off the debt, they can walk into the bank, which has a number 26 and 213 zeros after it. That was two years ago. Now it's probably 215 15 or 16 zeros after it with compounded interest. And say to the International Monetary Fund, we're going to zero out this debt because I've got a $25 million charge against 67 million mortgages and about as many in, how many cars are insured in the United States? 100, 100 uh, let's see, we've got 400 million people. So we've probably got upwards around 200 million automobiles of trucks and cars, and it's all fraud. So each one carries a $25 million fine. So the insurance company's got to cough up enough money to pay off the national debt. Out of all this money they got in their hopper along with the banks. And because, you know, what would that be? One less zero than 213 would be 212 zeros? Like, how much is enough? Pay off the national debt, everybody gets a pay raise, the dollar is secure, and we get to fix things. So yeah, but Russell and I are presidential candidates. <laughs>